going to show you how to absolutely tank your game's performance. And how to fix it in your Unreal Engine game. Welcome to the channel, everybody. My name is Taken Grace, and I make Unreal Engine tutorials and videos like this one. So if that's something you're interested in, and you want to become a better game dev, uh, hit the subscribe button, join the community down below here. So UI is a major component in your game, and one thing that you need to remember is that it's generally always loaded into memory and visible for the most part. And look, there's a lot of UI tutorials out there that are teaching you a few bad things, and I just want to show you guys what those are and how to basically fix those. And we're going to do that in this video here, so let's get started here. So uh, I've uh, pre-made a health bar here. Uh, if you guys want to learn how to actually make this health bar, you guys can click on the video up in the corner there, um, and that'll take you over to that video there. But anyways, I got my health bar here, and uh, if we open up our uh, the side here for the progress bar, um, you can see that we have a, a bind here for percent, so that'll get that value and return it. And then we also have one here for our current health text and our max health text. Uh, over in our script here, we have uh, I have a reference to my player, and then I have a uh, little bit of scripting here that changes the color of the health bar based on how much percent our percent bar is. So this particular script here isn't necessarily a problem. Uh, what is a problem is that it's running off of event tick, and if we go back to our designer, uh, th just basically the fact that we're using binds at all is is a major problem. So the problem with binds is the same as with event tick, it runs on every single frame. Now for your health bar, you don't need to be checking every single frame if there's been a change. We only really need to update our health bar if we've gained health or taken damage. So yeah, once you have like 10 widgets or something in your game and they're all using binds for every little thing here, like that's just gonna be a huge detriment to your game's performance. Uh, we don't want that. So how do we fix it? Well, I would recommend using a HUD class, which uh, I'll just make one here quick. Uh, so just go to a new blueprint class and we're going to just go to all classes and we're going to type HUD and we're going to select this one here. This will be a blueprint class. So by default, Unreal Engine has a C++ HUD class that's uh, activated in your um, game mode. So we'll just make this, we'll just call this HUD class. Okay, uh, now in order to use this HUD class, we need to go into our game mode, which if I can figure out where it is right here. And we need to go to HUD class and we need to change this from the C++ HUD class to the one we just made. So um, the HUD class is going to actually create and manage all of the widgets in our game. And that way we minimize the amount of like casts to our player. All the individual widgets can actually talk to each other and it's just really easy to manage your UI in one blueprint class. All right, so after that, we'll just close that. So a lot of things in our game actually need to communicate with our HUD. So the most effective way to do that is with interfaces. So if you don't know what those are, I do have a video coming out uh, next week uh, on interfaces. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. So I've uh, already gone ahead and made an interface uh, inside my interfaces folder here. And if I open that up, I just made one for player gaining health and player taking damage, both with floats uh, as inputs there. Uh, so inside our HUD class that we just made, we're gonna open that up. So uh, let's go to our event graph and uh, we can get rid of event tick and event begin overlap. We're not gonna use those. We are gonna come out of event begin play and we're gonna need a reference to our player because this is where uh, all of our health data is going to be and then all the other data that you're gonna need for your HUD class anyway. So I mentioned before that your HUD is always loaded into memory and guess what else is always loaded into memory? Your player. So in this case, uh, casting to your first person or third person or whatever person character you have in your game uh, is totally acceptable and we're only doing it once off of event begin play and then we're setting a variable so we can reference that uh, anytime we need. Okay, after that we're going to create a function called widgets to spawn. So in widgets to spawn, so obviously in our HUD class we need to spawn all of our widgets first before we can do all the codes and stuff. So this is actually going to be basically off of event begin play where we're going to spawn all the widgets in the world that we want to use. Um, and then you can set whether some of them are hidden or some of them are not. So out of widgets to spawn, we're going to just grab a sequence and then you can just in each order that you want to create each widget and you can just create... Uh, whoops, that is the wrong node! Create widget. And I will select my health bar. Okay, uh, we will add that to our viewport. And then uh, we will actually, before that, we will promote this to a variable because now we can use this in our HUD blueprint class 
to interact with other widgets or not interact with code elsewhere uh, in the blueprint. So we don't don't have to deal with everything in the individual uh, in every individual widget because that gets it really taxing. So on that note, um, all of our scripting should be inside the HUD class. The only time that you would do scripting inside the widget itself is if you have multiple widgets at the same time. So a good example is my inventory system uh, from uh, the inventory UI series that I have here on YouTube. If you guys can check that out, uh, card is in the corner there. Uh, but our inventory slots, we have 24 of those and each one needs their own individual code so that they can run their own image, their own quantity, all that kind of stuff. So that scripting I did inside the widget itself and not inside the HUD class. Okay, so that's that's an example where you do it inside the widget, but majority of all of your scripting for your UI and your HUD should be inside your HUD class. Okay, let's actually name this so we know what it is. HUD-R, there we go. Okay, uh, at the end, uh, this is where I add a uh, visibility node. Uh, vis set visibility, and we'll just make sure that the health bar is dragged in there, and then I uh, set hit testable not to self and all children. Not hit testable self and all children. I don't know why I couldn't say that right. But anyways. All right, so I mentioned earlier that uh, we only want to update our health bar when we actually gain health or take damage. So to do that, uh, we are going to just exit widgets to spawn. We are going to place that at the end here so that actually happens. Um, and then we're going to uh, make a new function and we'll just call it health update. All right. And inside health update, uh, this is where we're going to actually uh, update our health every time we take health, uh, gain health or take damage. Uh, so in our health update, uh, this is where we're going to do all the fun stuff. So we're going to grab our player character. This is where we have, uh, or in this example, this is where I have my health, uh, all my health stuff. So I need my current health and my max health. Um, I would personally do these inside of a health component, but just for this example, we're just going to be inside of our player. Uh, then we're going to drag out our health bar that we widget that we just made. Whoops, we're not setting it. We are getting it. There we go. Uh, we're going to get our current health text. And we're going to set text. And then we are going to just drag this in. It's going to convert it to a little nodey node thing there. Uh, next, we will get the max health text and plug that in set text whoops set tooltip text no we just want to set text there we go okay and then we'll drag our max health in there and get the little convertivert node again uh, okay and then we need to get our percent bar to actually set our percent progress get health progress bar and then we are going to set percent okay and obviously to get that uh, we need to uh, divide our current health by our max health sorry for the sketty here there we go and uh, plug that in and that will give us our health bar percent uh, and then this is where I would put the the scripting here for this stuff here so I would just completely get rid of event tick I would not even entertain that idea um, I would uh, cut this here and now in our HUD class at the end after we've updated our health this is where we'll do a check to see if our health is uh, above 50% uh, or between 26% uh, and 50% or er, do I want equals you know what this node this node is wrong I should do the greater than or equals to just realizing my error there we go uh, all right, so this will update on that. Uh, this health progress bar we have to uh, update uh, from our player, or pardon me, from our health bar. Basically, we need this. Let's just copy this. Health bar, progress bar, target, 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 done. Okay. All right, so that function is done. And I need to put that into this percent here. Just do percent and percent. There it goes. Okay, that's all done now. Um, let's uh, go back to our event graph and we need to put health update on event begin play so we can actually set our health from the beginning. Um, but to update it in real time, we actually need to do a uh, interface event. Okay, so to test this out, uh, we need to uh, actually take some health and damage. So we're just gonna create a quick debug here in our player character. 
Uh, so I'm just going to hit num0. Num0. And num1. Okay, so when we hit these, uh, we're actually, we're actually going to need a reference to our HUD here. So we're going to go up to our uh, event begin play. We're going to get actor of class. And then we're going to get our HUD class. Whoops. Okay, and let's promote this to a variable. And we'll call it HUD. All right, so now that that's been created down here, um, we are going to call the events. So this is just a debug. Obviously, in your game, you'll have potions or food or whatever whatever your health system is, and then you'll take damage in some other capacity. But this is just to kind of trigger the events here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, um, out of pressed, we're going to get the BPI health. Whoops, BPI health. Um, player gained health. And out of here, we'll do player take damage out of our BPI here. Okay, so anywhere in your game that you have uh, gaining health or taking damage, you're going to call this event, and then you're going to, um, the target is going to be your player character, or wherever you have these particular events firing off. So, in this example, it's going to be in our player character, but I'd recommend doing it in a health component of some variety. So we got our, uh, where, where are the interfaces? I can't see, because the camera's in the way. Uh, so we got uh, these two events here that we're going to implement. So I, uh, so I hit compile and I forgot we got to actually put a reference to self here in this uh, target. Okay, that's done. Uh, so that'll send uh, a message to our interface to actually fire off. And we can just type in for player gain health 100 here and damage 100 as well. All right. Okay, uh, so now that when these events actually fire, we need the functions, which I just created here super quick. Uh, so just super simple gain health and take damage function. And uh, we're gonna, in our event graph, we're gonna just implement those here. So we'll gain health here. And we'll plug that in there. And we have take damage, yeah, up here, take damage. Whoop. Boom, just like that. Um, so after we've done these, this is where we want to update our HUD by dragging out our HUD class and then getting that health update function. Health update. Okay, we'll drag that in. So now uh, anytime that these interfaces fire and change our health or damage, uh, it's going to update our health bar. Okay, uh, so if it, all this didn't make sense, once again, I do have a video available to that it goes way more into depth on how to do a health component and a health bar. So uh, definitely check that out if uh, you are feeling lost. <laughs> so the takeaway from this video basically is just to show you that the HUD class is just superior in every way uh, to doing it inside widget. So we're just gonna test it out here. There's my health. And then we'll take some, or gain some health, or take some damage, sorry. And, cool. Uh, I just noticed that the percent thing is not working actually, so let's just check that out here for a sec. Health update. Oh, that's why, because I didn't, 0.5. There we go, okay, let's uh, test it out. There it is, gain some health, above 50%. Drop that down to 25. There, it changes to red. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, guys, I appreciate you dropping by here. Uh, this uh, HUD class is, like, one of the most useful things uh, that I've ever used in terms of my UI. So, uh, I really recommend, uh, if you currently have a game, like, I would build a hub class and then slowly start to like bring your code over and, uh, and just manage it all in one place. It's just going to make your game run so much better um, than just doing everything inside the widgets themselves. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video guys. Uh, I have a video coming out next week, like I said, uh, for interfaces. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video there. Peace.